I am just speaking on the diversity of wood species in a particular ecosystem in Nigeria. And that is the most important ecosystem in Nigeria, and I believe you will agree with me, that is the most important ecosystem in the world. That is a tropical rainforest ecosystem because of uh, species abundance and diversity. And because of how good this ecosystem is, you will also agree with me that the, the amount of pressure on it is increasing daily. That is why we were interested in actually carrying out this study. Let's assess the status of this particular tropical rainforest ecosystem in southwest Nigeria. Because the rain system, the tropical rain system ecosystem is concentrated only in southwest Nigeria. Now, let me just give a, you know Nigeria happens to be the biggest country in uh, Africa with a population of 150 million. And uh, I wish to also state that about 75% of this population in the rural area, they rely solely on forest for their livelihood. Now, Nigeria has virtually all the ecological zones. In the southern part, very close to the coast, we have the mangrove and the freshwater swamp. Now, immediately after that, we have the rainforest ecosystem, which I have said is just 2% of the total forest area in Nigeria. Then after the rainforest ecosystem, you have the savanna. The savanna is 70% of the land, uh, of the forest, total forest area in Nigeria. Then you have some uh, fringe or riparian forest. But you, like I've said, over the past years, the world has experienced a lot of changes in the environmental and sexual and all spheres of life. Now, one of such changes is what is actually an interest to the world and that is forest degradation. These changes have had considerable impact on human activity and natural ecosystem. You know, today there is a great concern about the impact of deforestation and forest degradation worldwide. Why? Because of climate change, which is a direct consequence of forest degradation and deforestation. Now, as I've said, many processes are going on within the entire forest ecosystems. Species are already migrating, and these are the species that are actually good. They are the tropical outdoor species that are good for our, our, our forest products. Now, plants and animals associated with certain geographical regions are moving or they are dying. You see, the habitats are becoming reduced as a result of temperature increase. Food chain has also changed. Why? Because of deforestation, because of degradation. Now, these are other changes that are taking place as a sort of degradation and deforestation, especially in the tropical rainforest ecosystem that is supporting the economy of the country, apart from oil. Now, the tropical rainforest has the capacity to regulate atmospheric carbon by storing it in the plant tissues. Now, Deforestation in Nigeria is estimated to be 3%, and you know this is very high, and the uh, FAO has actually quoted Nigeria as a country with the highest, one of the countries with the highest deforestation rate. Just 10 countries, Nigeria happens to be one. Uh, the only source of wood is the forest as renewable natural resources. No matter how beautiful the wood is, no matter how beautiful its products are, without the forest, they become unavailable. And the beauty, you may not be able to see it. I think you will all agree with me. So it is paramount that this resource base is well managed for continuous production. Now, what should we do to this goose that is the tropical rainforest ecosystem that is laying the golden eggs, wood and wood products? Should we kill the goose that is laying this golden egg because it's very good? No. It deserves adequate care and sustainable management. Of course, sustainability or sustainable forest management is at a crossroad, generally in developing countries. Now, what is the objective of this study? To assess the present status, as I've said, of the tropical rainforest system of southwest Nigeria, where they are available, in terms of tree species diversity and abundance, the volume yield, and other trigger variables the structure of the forest, the present physiognomy, then the store carbon per hectare in the above ground biomass of those forests, then the impact of anthropogenic activities on biodiversity conservation. Now, the 
Southwest Nigeria has six uh, states, uh, but this study was carried out in four of the states. The study naturally had two sections, biodiversity and ecosystem functions assessment, then estimation of carbon stored in the above ground stem balance. Now this is map of Southwest Nigeria, and uh, we also have the map of Nigeria with uh, INICEF. Uh, so this is map of Nigeria during the Southwest where the study was carried out. Now, the tropical rainforest ecosystem of forest, this study was carried out in uh, forest reserves and forest reserves happens to be one of the institute methods of, for, uh, of biodiversity conservation or wood species conservation. And uh, these are the types we have in the country. These are the owner chiefs. These are the number available. These are the specific location where you have all these in-situ conservation methods. But this study concentrates on just two, with the forest reserves and the street nature reserves. Why have I chosen these two? The forest reserves, we refer to them in Nigeria as productive forest. And that is where logging and anthropogenic activities are actually allowed, but under control. But in the street nature reserves or the permanent sampling plots, there are no activities, no activities, no activities allowed. So I uh, in an attempt to study the effect of human interference, human activity uh, on uh, wood species conservation, we have to look at the status of forests that have not been touched, that is virgin forest in court, and uh, the productive forest where logins, uh, logging activities are allowed. Now, fifth procedure require a living selected forest reserves distributed in the four states. 11 forest reserves were involved. And the area of these forest reserves varied from 35 square kilometers, uh, between 35 square kilometers and 490 square kilometers, I mean the area of the forest. The forest reserves are bigger, the street nature reserves are smaller, 35, uh, uh, 35 square kilometers. Now I have the list of the forest reserves that was covered in this study, uh, there in the slide. Now this is the method of data collection using of uh, two parallel strips of uh, one kilometers and uh, locating 25 by 25 plots at an interval of 250 on each of the transepts. This was done in each of the sites. Now biodiversity assessment, that's who species assessment and abundance and distribution were determined now these were compared using some biodiversity indices and species that are real, threatened species, and those that have gone into extinction were determined. Then above ground biomass estimation was also carried out in each of the forest, using the density of each forest and its volume. Now I have here the wood species in each of the uh, 11 reserves. But it is not possible to, uh, to, to, to chew all the species in each of the reserves. So I have decided to select 10 most abundant species, tropical wood species in each of these 11 reserves. So let's just me run through them, you can see them. So these are what we have in the first forest reserve. This is the 10 most abundant in the second forest reserves with all the parameters of each tree, uh, with all the variables for each tree species. This is the third. Yeah. So these are just the forest reserves. And here I have the summary of what are the status of each of the reserves in terms of wood species diversity. Now you will, let's just go to the total. The total number of species is 180. Somebody asked me yesterday that do I know the total number of species we have in Nigeria? I said, as of now, I don't know, because there's no way I can know. But from this study, we will discover, based on the, uh, on the location selected, the 11 forests have selected, we have 188 species uh, distributed into 44 families, and uh, we have other information about these reserves in this present slide. Now, I just go to the summary of tree growth variable which is very important for carbon estimation. And this is exactly what I have. Now, if you look at this slide, I have said that the reserves were divided into two. Those we call disturbed, where 
activities are allowed, but I've said it again, under the strict control of uh, the Ministry of Environment, Forestry Department in charge of forestry resources in the country. Uh, this is quite different from what is obtainable in the India, where the forest, natural forests are totally preserved, and, uh, but in Nigeria we allow logging in our natural forest, uh, but under control. But the second one is undisturbed, which we normally ref which we refer to as street nature reserve in Nigeria. And because we have few of them in the southwest, that's why we I cannot uh, cover most uh, more than this. Now you will agree with you can see from this slide that the variables in the undisturbed, of course, is expected quite greater than what we have in the disturbed. That shows that human activities are actually affecting the abundance, the diversity of wood species in the reserves. Now, this uh, mean diameter and high resolution of species in the forest reserves, according to diameter classes. Now, just uh, using the PCA to characterize the diversity of the species. Now this diameter distribution of this species, you will, of course, normally for a mature forest, the diameter distribution is supposed to follow a kind of inverse the chip, but this is achieved for most of the reserves. But for those that are being degraded, or we are logging as just, uh, there is too much logging, uh, it may not actually follow that uh, pattern, which from what we have seen. Now this is the structure, that is the physiognomy in terms of height distribution of those reserves. Now this is mean carbon stock in the forest reserves, according to diameter classes. You can see the role of bee trees uh, in carbon storage. That is the size of the tree is actually contributing and of course you will agree with me that these big trees are what are being caught by the loggers or by the tree fellers. So the more you remove the big ones, the carbon sequestration is being reduced. Now, the, in our attempt to be able to quickly estimate carbon in our natural forest, I try some models to come out with an equation which can be used to estimate carbon. And this is just a kind of equation, the linear and the nonlinear. Now, this is a typical forest reserve in Nigeria with fletching going on. Fletchings are what you do in the natural forest. And uh, the people will go with the power chainsaw, cut the tree, convert into plants of this nature right there and then in the forest without actually bringing to the city for conversion. Now this is a deforested area in a forest reserve. Now these are logs are with evacuation. These are fair log and a storm in one of the forest reserves. Now these are storm of illegally fair trees in those forest reserves. Trees with buttress in the forest reserve. And you will agree with me that these trees of this size are disappearing uh, at an alarming rate. The only place where you can get this now are in the street nature reserve. So these are some of the benefits of this forest. Truck, firewood. Now, degradation and now sustainable forest management will lead to nutrient loss, food insecurity, decrease in quality of ecosystem services, and shortage of food for domestic and industrial uses. So if the forest is not sustainably managed, uh, wood industry, whether carving, whether other ones, they are, there is a great danger. Because of course very soon there may be no wood for their use. Now there is a need to assess the actual current extent of all the forest reserves in the study area. Now we also have to also analyze the prey or the effect or the impact of anthropogenic activities on 
forest uh, soil and carbon deflection. So I uh, put a lot of suggestion here. Thank you for listening. <laughs>